This section is all about distances and the distance between points, planes, and lines. <clears throat> so let's start off pretty simple. Determine the distance between two points. So if I draw a very quick diagram here, call this point A, call this point B, how do we find the distance between them? The way that we could do this is we think about AB as a vector. And then the distance between them is just the magnitude of that vector, right? So if we find vector AB, it's just going to be the difference between points A and points B. So it's going to be, if we start with B, so B minus A, it's going to be negative 6 minus 2, 8 minus 3, and 2 minus negative 4. So AB is negative 8. 5 and 6. So that's vector AB. Now to find the distance between those two points, we could just use the, uh, the magnitude of those. Um, so the magnitude we know, the magnitude of AB is just going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared, which comes out to, well actually we'll just do 64 plus 25 plus 36 which comes out to 125. So it's root 125. And we can actually reduce that radical. Um, we can pull out a, a 25 as a 5, so it's 5 root 5. So that is the distance between those two points, just the magnitude of the vector between the two points. The next one has the distance between a point and a line. And the thing to remember here, always draw a sketch. I think that's the most important thing for these questions, draw a sketch. So we have our line, and we have a point. And we're going to assume this is happening in three dimensions. Point is called P, and our line has some point, right? And then it has a direction vector, right? Um, and we can call this point, I'm just going to call this point A. I don't know, whatever, A. So the question is now, how do we find the distance between the point and the line. And obviously, we don't want just any distance between the point and the line. We want the shortest distance between the point and the line. So if we think about it, we want the perpendicular distance from the point and the line. And how are we going to solve that? Well, I think the easiest way to think about this, using all tools that we already know, is let's make a right angle triangle. So A is not the point that's right under P on the line. So let's connect A and P together to make a vector. I'm going to call this vector AP. So the thing is here, we have essentially two vectors. We have vector AP, as I called it, and then we have the direction vector of the line, M. How could we possibly find that distance between the point and the line? Well, if you look at this as just a, a right angle triangle, if we knew, so we can find that the length of AP, if we knew what this little angle was in here, we could find, we could use sine basically, our trig, to, to find what that opposite side of that right angle triangle is. And that's essentially what we're going to do. We're just going to find that angle first and then determine that opposite side. So in order to do that, we should find um, what our vector AP is because we basically need to use dot product to find the angle between two vectors, right? So we need to find what AP is. And again, we're just going to subtract those two points between A and P. Um, so our P is uh, negative 1 minus 1. We're looking at this point here and this point here, by the way. And then 1 minus 2. And then 6 minus negative 1. What does that give us? Negative 2 negative 1, and 7. That's our vector AP. So once we know what AP is, um, we basically have two vectors here. We have AP and our vector M, our direction vector of our line. We want to find the angle between those two. And we know the relationship we're going to use for that is just our dot product, um, which is usually A dot B equals the magnitude of A magnitude of B cos theta. 
right? So if we know the, the, uh, the dot product of our two vectors, the magnitudes of A and B, we can solve for cos theta, um, essentially. So just off to the side here, I'm going to find the magnitude of vector A, which will be AP. The magnitude of AP is, if we look up there at our vector, negative 2, 1, 7. So it's just going to be the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 49, which is going to give us the root of 54. And the magnitude of M, our direction vector, uh, our direction vector again is 0, 1, 1. So it's just going to be the square root of 2. There we go. And then A dot B, I'll just do that up here. A dot B, if we dot those two things together, um, our two vectors, again, the two vectors that we're looking at is this one here and then our direction vector of our line. So it's going to be negative 2 times 0, which is just 0. Negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And 7 times 1, which is 7. So our dot product is equal to, uh, looks like it's 6. And then we can just plug it in. Sorry, it's a little bit squished here. I just wanted to fit it all in the, the one place. So a dot b is 6. So 6 equals root 54, root 2, cos theta. So if I'm solving for theta, theta is going to be inverse cos of 6 over root 54 root 2, which comes out to 54.74 degrees. So that's our angle. So what would we have so far? We have the angle between those two vectors, right? We have the angle between the two vectors. And if we wanted to find this side of the triangle, we, uh, we could use this hypotenuse length, which we already know is root 54, and this angle here, and sine in order to find that opposite side, right? So let's do that now. So if we do, <coughs> so just going back up here again, sorry about the clutteredness. I should have gave more space for this question. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So if we rearrange this, our opposite side or our distance is just going to be h sine theta. And our h is just our, uh, our hypotenuse, which is root 54 sine 54.74, which comes out to root 54 times sine 54.74, which comes out to almost exactly 6. The answer is actually exactly 6. So if, you, if there was no rounding error, it should come up to exactly 6. Um, so that's our answer. That's the distance from that point to that line. So just using a little bit of geometry, a little bit of trig, um, we were able to solve this question. But the key was draw a picture, draw a little sketch. And you can see it's essentially just a right angle triangle. We're trying to find one of the lengths. Oh, and just a label here, that D there was that distance. <coughs> All right, let's go on to the next question. Point to a plane. This one's actually a little bit easier, I think, than the previous one. The previous one was a whole bunch of steps. This one is a little bit more straightforward. Um, the calculation is a little more straightforward, but the concept is maybe a little bit trickier. So we have a plane. Let's pretend we're looking at the edge of the plane here. And we have a point that's sort of floating above that plane. And we want to know the distance between the point and the plane. So it actually, the drawing looks very similar to the previous one. All right? Just imagine this is a plane that's coming sort of directly out at you. Uh, we're looking at the edge of it instead of just a line. And we know, uh, so we want the distance there. And what do we know, essentially? We know that this point S is negative 1, 2, and negative 4. And we know the equation of the plane. So how can we go about doing this? If we look at our previous question, the way we did it with a line is we had a point on the, the line. And we basically used that in order to find the the distance. So we can actually take a similar approach here. Can we find a point on the plane? Like, for example, a point maybe over here. Because if we had a point over there, wouldn't we have a similar setup where we could find this vector and then maybe somehow find D with the right angle triangle? And the answer is yes, and that's basically what we do. So how do we find a point on the plane? 
um, the easiest way, just plug in some stuff as zero. So I'm just going to plug in x and y as zero, x equals zero, y equals zero, and see what happens to that plane. So essentially we're going to get um, 8z plus 3 equals zero, and then if we solve for z, z is going to be negative 0.375. So a point on the line, or on the plane, I should say, is going to be 0, 0, negative 0 0.375. This is just one random point on the line. Um, it's actually the, the z-intercept, but it doesn't matter. We could have chosen another point. We could have made y and z 0, but this is just the one I chose. So I'm going to call this point A, and I'm going to call it 0, 0, negative 0 0.375. So now what might help us if we, is if we have that vector s or as. So let's find that vector as. And it's just going to be the difference again between these two points. So negative 1 minus 0, 2 minus 0, <clears throat> negative 4 minus negative, so it's basically plus 0 0.375. And that comes out to negative 1. 2 and negative 3.625. See, it's easy when we plug in zeros for x and y because everything sort of cancels out, except for that z, but that doesn't matter. So we have this vector now. That's cool. How could we possibly find that distance? Well, if you look at what we did in the previous question, the previous question we used a little bit of trig, um, but the problem here, do we have, do we have a vector on the line? And the answer is no. We don't have a vector that goes in this direction. It's a, it's a plane. Sorry, not a line. A plane. We don't have a vector on the plane. Um, but what do we have instead? What does that equation of our plane tell us? Remember, it's the Cartesian equation of a plane, which actually tells us the normal to the plane. So the normal is going to look something like that. We don't know how long it is compared to that distance. It's not going to be the same length as the distance, right? But it is going to be in the same direction as the distance. So we're going to call that, sort of squeezing in there, we're going to call that n. That's our normal vector. So we know that, but we don't know, we don't know a vector in, in the line. But that's OK, because we have a tool to be able to find what d is. Do you remember your projections from our last unit? Couldn't we just find d as the projection of our vector a s onto n? Remember what a projection is. Pretend the sun is shining over here, right? And it's going to cast a shadow of vector as onto the normal vector n. So what's that shadow going to look like? Well, it's going to sort of shade, 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 shade. So essentially, that projection is going to be the exact length that we're looking for, the distance of, uh, from the point to the plane. And this is the way we do it. It's just This is why, essentially, we learn projections. It's an easy way to find the distance between stuff. Um, so anyways. Let's recall our, um, our formula for our projection. So we essentially want, let me just write out the, the projection formula first. So it's the projection of A on B. And we just want the length of the projection, right? We don't need the vector projection, just the length of the projection. So projection A on B is going to be A dot B, these are both vectors, over the magnitude of the thing you're projecting onto, so the magnitude of B. And that's it. That's our equation for our projection. So not so bad, because we already have, think about this, we already have vector A, we already have vector B. It's basically the vector AS and the normal vector, right? Just be careful that the normal vector is the thing we're projecting onto, so B in that case. So let's plug in what we know. A dot B. Well, A dot B um, is going to be our, the dot product of the two, of our, two vectors, right? So this is one of our vectors. Um, and then the other vector is, actually, we should write that out, the normal vector. What is the normal vector? The normal vector here is 8, negative 4, and 8. So if we dot those two things, so dot, let me just make sure they're both on the page right here. So we're going to dot 8. So again, we're dotting this thing here and this thing here. So instead of A and B, we're going to make... Um, Actually, let me just write that out. Instead of a and b, we're dotting um, uh, vector as dot the normal 
over the magnitude of the normal. That's what we're actually doing. So to dot a, s, and n, it's going to be 8 times negative 1, which is negative 8, negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8, and then 8 times negative 3.625, which ends up being negative 29. Nice that those decimals disappear. And then all over the magnitude of n. And the magnitude of n is going to be the square root of 64 plus 16 plus 64. And if you do this all in your calculator, it comes out to negative 3.75. So the length of the projection, going back here, the length of the projection here is just negative 3.75. Why is it negative? Well, I'll leave that to you to think about. Think about our projections and the directions of those vectors. It has to do with the directions of those vectors. But really, we don't really care about the negative, right? We just want the, the magnitude of that projection. So we just want the distance. So essentially, the distance is just the absolute value of that, the positive value. So the distance is 3.75 units. And that's our answer. So the next type of distance is the distance between parallel planes. Notice that these two planes are parallel. We know that by the, the direction vectors. The direction vector of the two planes, actually, let me just write that out. The direction vector of this plane, I'll call it n1, is going to be 2, negative 1, 2. And the direction vector n2 of this plane is just also going to be 2, negative 1, 2. Now look at the d value. The d values are different. One is 16 and one is 4. So they must be parallel planes because they have parallel normals. But they're not the same plane because the d value isn't the same. So think about this. Are we only interested in the parallel planes, the distance between parallel planes? Well, what if planes aren't parallel? They're always going to intersect, right? So we don't really care about that because the distance between any planes is usually 0 unless they're parallel. If they're parallel, like I'm about to draw, two planes that are parallel, there's gonna have a, they're going to have a constant distance between them, right? Which I'm going to call d in this case. And the shortest distance between them, if you think about it, is going to make 90 degrees with each plane. So how do we find that distance between the planes? It's actually almost exactly the same as the previous question. Um, we basically need some points, and if we, if we found a point on both planes, so we found a point, for example, here and here, right? We could do the same thing as we did in the previous question. We could find this vector. We could find the direction vector of the normal between the planes, right? Which just happens to be in line with that uh, the distance that we're looking for. And then we could use the same process as last time, the projection, in order to find the answer. So that's what we're going to do. So the first step, we need to find points on these planes. So looking at plane 1, um, I'm just going to plug in x as 0, y as 0. And if we do that, z, well, 2z equals negative 4, so z equals uh, negative 2. So a point on this plane is 0, 0, negative 2. And then a point on this plane, if we do the same thing, let's plug in x as 0, y as 0, z, so 2z equals negative 16. Let me just fix that. 16, negative 16. That's ugly. But z comes out to negative 8. So our point on this plane is going to be 0, 0, negative 8. Let's just label those. So it doesn't matter which one is which. Not really. We don't really know which plane is above which plane or which perspective we're looking at it at. So who cares? I'm just going to put these in random ones as the two points on our two planes. So we need to find the vector between those two points. And I'm just going to call this vector, I don't know, A. I like the letter A. So vector A is just going to be the distance, or the difference, I should say, between those two. So it's just going to be, um, if we're doing 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, and negative 8 minus 2, which is negative 10. So A 
is, oh, sorry, it's minus negative 2, so it's actually plus 2, right? Let me just fix that. Plus 2. So it's actually 0, 0, negative 6 is our vector a. Okay, so that's vector a. And remember, we have the normal here is going to be our vector that we're projecting onto. Does it matter which normal we use? No, they're both the same. It doesn't really matter, right? So our projection formula, we're going to project a onto n, right? Oh, we used a capital A. I should use a capital A there. Um, so the projection of a onto n is just going to be a dot n over the magnitude of n, the thing we're projecting onto. And if we do that calculation, we can just do a dot n. Um, oh, by the way, just to show you what's sort of going on, remember again, the sun is over here. We're projecting from a onto this line that n takes up. So we're basically finding what that d is between those two, uh, those two points. So a dot n is going to be... Uh, our vector a is down here, and our vector n is up here, so it's just going to be 0 plus 0, and then 2 times negative 2, negative 4, all over the magnitude of our normal. And the magnitude of our normal is going to be the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 4, which is going to be 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. So our answer is going to come out to... Oh, sorry, I messed up here with the dot product. This should be 12, right? Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Uh, so the answer comes out to negative 12 over 3, which is 4. Actually, it's negative 4. But for the distance between them, we just want the, the magnitude of that, right? So the distance is just 4. There we go. That's the distance between the two points. Lastly, we have the distance between two lines. And these can be any two lines in three-dimensional space. They don't have to be parallel. And we're not really concerned with lines that intersect, because if they intersect, the distance between them is going to be zero. Remember, we're looking for the minimum distance between them. So I'm just going to so I'm just going to draw two random lines sort of floating above one. Assume one is floating sort of above the other one. They're, they look like they're going to intersect on this flat plane, but let's assume one's above the page. And the minimum distance between those is going to be basically, same as the previous example, form two right angles with those two. Now the thing we know about this, and we'll call this distance d, that's the distance we're trying to find. The thing we know about these, these uh, lines is that each of them has a point on it and a direction vector. I'll do the direction vectors in blue and the points in black. So there's our point and there's a direction vector, there's our point and there's our direction vector of our second line. Um, so the tricky thing about this, and we'll call this, actually, let me just label L1, L2, so we can differentiate. The tricky thing about this is to visualize it on a flat piece of paper or a flat screen. It's, it's tricky to visualize. But the thing to keep in mind, these are two planes that are skewed. We're going to assume they're skewed. Because um, if they're parallel, the, the, the same process will apply. But something to think about, if two lines are skewed to each other, they never touch, they never intersect, and um, what else has that property in 3D space? Two things that never touch or never intersect. The answer is planes. If you have parallel planes, sort of one above the other, they will never touch and they will never, yeah, they'll never get near to each other. They'll have the same distance between them. And one thing that we're going to do in class, is I'm going to show you how this works, but basically you can assume each of these lines is on a separate parallel plane. Just drawing a quick sketch here below. So if this is one of those planes and this is the other plane, you can sort of assume that these two lines, one of the lines is sort of going like this through this plane and one of the lines is sort of like going through this through the other plane. These planes are above each other. And as I said, the distance between these two planes is going to be essentially constant. So the distance between these two lines, the shortest distance between these two lines, is going to be the same as the distance between those two planes formed by the lines. 
Um, a little bit tricky to visualize, but essentially this is what it comes down to. We know how to find the distance between two parallel planes, right? We did that in the previous question. So the question now becomes, can we determine the equation of these planes? Because if we have the equation of these planes, we can do the exact same thing we did in the previous question, right? So let's look at the first, the top plane, L1, right? It's based on this line up here. So this plane here is based on this line up here. And this line has a point and a direction vector. What else do we need to define the plane? Well, if we have the point and we have one direction vector, right, all we need is another direction vector in order to define that plane, right? Well, if these two planes are parallel, won't they both have the same direction vectors? They essentially will, right? So we can use this direction vector to express basically the plane up here. So if I call this m2 and m1, the two direction vectors of the two lines, essentially this plane up here is going to be made up of m1 and m2, the two direction vectors, and the point from l1. And the point from l1 was negative 2, 1, 0. Okay, a little bit hard to see, but that's, that's that point. So can we determine the equation of that plane. And the equation of the plane that's going to help us most is the Cartesian equation, right? Because then we're going to have, um, we're basically going to have a normal, and once we have a normal here, we can pretty easily find the distance between the plane. Um, so that's what we have to do. So in order to find a normal, essentially we just need to cross m1 and m2. So if we do m1 cross m2, that's going to give us the direction vector of the so to find that, I'm just going to write out, sort of off to the side here, our vectors as, um, we're going to do m1 cross m2, right? So 1, negative 1, and 1, 1, negative 1, that's our first direction vector, and our second direction vector is 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. So cross product here should be negative 1 times 2, negative 2, minus 1 which is this one, and then this one is 1 times 1 minus 2, which is this one, and then 1 times 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1, which should give us, oops, negative 3, negative 1, and 2. So this is the equation, or this is the, the vector that represents the normal between or the normal of the plane, right? Because it's the cross product of those two direction vectors. So again, if we have the normal, we have a point on this plane, we are given it in the equation of our line, it's going to be the same process. So I'm just going to draw sort of a side view now of those two planes, right? If these are those two planes, um, not the lines, these are not the, the, uh, the lines, we have the point here and the point on L, it doesn't really matter which point we use actually because either way it's going to give us the same thing, negative 2, 1, and 0, which is our point. We're looking for the distance between these two things, right? And the thing that we know is that we know the normal is going to have that equation, right? And we also know on the other, line, other plane, we know another point because that's a point on the other line. And the point on the other line was 0, 1, 0. So this vector here, what we're essentially looking for to find the distance is the projection. Again, I'm going to draw my little sun here to show the projection. The projection of this vector onto the normal. So we need to find that, that vector. I'm going to call it vector A again. So let's go over here. So vector A is going to be... Um, 0 minus 2 minus negative 2, which is 2, 1 minus 1, which is 0, and 0 minus 0, which is 0. So that's our vector A. So again, what we're trying to find is that projection. So let's write up the projection formula. We're looking for the projection of A on N, which is going to equal A dot N over the magnitude of N, which is going to give us... Um, where is our direction vector? Our direction vector is up there. So the dot product of those is going to be negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. And the other two components are going to be 0, right? Because our a vector has both of the other ones as 0. So there's going to be negative 6 over the magnitude of n. 
and the magnitude of n is just going to be, oops, not a, not a vector, it's going to be the square root of 9 plus 1 plus 4, so that's 14, root 14, so over root 14, which if you do this as a decimal, well, the answer, the, the exact answer, the exact answer would be um, the distance is is just 6 over root 14, right? Because we don't care about that negative sign, so that's the distance. Um, if you want it as a decimal, I'm going to put approximately 1.60. There we go. So it's essentially the same thing. We just need to, to come up with the planes first. There we go.